care about. WLBB, Carrollton, News Talk, 1330, FM 106.3. Good Monday morning, everybody. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice Program here on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. And this morning, we are streaming live on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. We can already get a good glimpse of my handsome young uh, uh, interviewee this morning. The gentleman's name is Jim Waters. He is the uh, Ward 3 Councilman for the City of Carrollton. Brief bio on him. He was born in Rome, Georgia, lived in Carrollton since 1976. He is a 1987 graduate of Carrollton High School, holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in Electrical Engineering from Southern Polytechnic State University and an MBA from the University of West Georgia. He's chairman of the Carroll County Tea Party. Does that still exist? No, okay. that, that's old, but okay. uh, I used to be four, in a, yeah, 10 years ago. And it says registered Republican. This is off the fresh, brand-new Carrollton City website. It needs to be updated. Okay. You're right. So that'll be something you do if re-elected. You'll <laughs> yeah, make sure I, that's I, updated. I'll, something I'll do today. Council Member Waters began his term as Ward 3 Council uh, Member in January 2012. He ran unopposed for the Ward 3 Council seat in November of 2015. However, in 2019, he has three challengers. Usama Ahmed, Tina Shockley, and Don Goodwin. We hope to have uh, each of them on the program this week. And uh, also, it's worth mentioning, Jim is the uh, elected, he was elected Mayor Pro Tem by the Mayor and Council in January of 2019, and uh, he'll remain in that seat at least till the end of this year. And I think you know, Carrollton City Council and Mayor have a decision whether to bring uh, somebody back as Mayor Pro Tem the next year. And typically, I think they're in the proce- process of trying to rotate it a little bit and give everybody a, a shot we'll to vote fill on that, that in seat. January, or whoever will vote on that. Jim Waters, our guest on this morning's Community Voice. Good to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. Encourage you if you're watching us on the Facebook page. Uh, to post questions and comments on there. We'll uh, take a peek at those during the uh, commercial break and, and pass those along and share them in our program. But uh, typically, everybody's just been like, all right, getting a good shot of our uh, our candidates. We did have the candidates for mayor on last week. Um, so, Jim Waters, tell us, uh, eight years ago, you got into this. I guess look back and what got you interested initially in, in local politics. Um, oh, yeah. Are your ideals the same at this point? And I may have to bump your blue mic there a little bit. Uh yeah, my ideals, I think, have, have I guess, um, changed. My, my, hopefully, I've matured a little bit in the last uh, eight or eight or nine years. But uh, you mentioned Tea Party earlier, and uh, that was probably what got me into local politics. I was, I was fired up, like a lot of people, uh, in 2008, 2009, about what was happening in Washington. And we had some rallies, if some, some of your listeners might remember. And someone approached me, heck, you're so passionate about this stuff. Why don't you do something uh, locally? Well, what do you, how do you do that? So, uh, trip back in time, I ran for county commissioner as a write in and blah, blah, blah. Then next year ran for city council against Dr. Belega and, and, um, and won, uh, fortunately. And yeah, kind of the rest is history. So I, I came into the office uh, with basically a platform of fiscal conservatism uh, and and doing the right thing, uh, et, high, high ethics, uh, not only for myself but for uh, for the council and transparency you know, as far as what the city was doing and uh, the financials and that kind of thing. And we and we wound up doing some things like posting all our financials online. Uh, based on that. And and also, you might remember the retirement package. I was kind of upset that there was a retirement package at the time for elected officials. Uh, I mean, it's fine. We still have a retirement for the city uh, employees, which is great. But uh, elected officials, I ran to get rid of that. I didn't have the votes the first four years to do that. Uh, I got shot down. But uh, when Matt Lane got in and a couple of other Walt, uh, we wound up passing that four years ago. So that's kind of, to answer your question, that's kind of how I got into it was my old Tea Party uh, hat. Let's talk about the military, rate. And all, more importantly, because First I've heard about the military. military rate. <laughs> Today at 12 o'clock noon is the final opportunity that, that Carrollton City residents have an opportunity to um, you know, have their questions answered, express their concerns. Um, right now, the Carrollton City, Carrollton City Council and the mayor do, do plan to maintain the military rate, but that de- will um, lead to, um, and we can call it a tax increase. That's the legal thing. The state, state makes you call it a tax increase, that's right. and that is because additional tax dollars will be um, collected, yep. and that's based on an increase in our tax digest over the, the past year, so they have the opportunity to collect additional money from taxpayers. Mm-hmm. Um, the city is so far, it's, you know, it's not a lot per house. 
um, people who are against it, even though apparently they have not spoke out publicly about it because they're not attending these hearings. So they're not really are, are people talking to you? Are they calling you on the phone and saying they have a, a problem with uh, maintaining the military? They may after today, but mm-hmm. uh, so far, I honestly have gotten two phone calls and they were just from friends of mine kind of ragging me a little bit about it. But, uh, you know, my my answer to them and to you is 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 basically uh what i think uh, uh, walt or maybe uh betty Kaysen had said uh, i don't want to put words in their mouth but we yes it is we're not rolling it back as you mentioned so therefore we have to advertise as a tax increase but i did want to point out uh that in the last five years we have rolled back twice we're at 4.6 mils i believe now uh five years ago we were at 4.68 or, or something like that so we've rolled it back twice in in five years we just uh, have decided not to do it this year. And so, it hasn't been raised in the last oh, maybe 15 years. Well, yes, it's 1991. However, oh, it's longer than that. Okay. Yeah, I was just what, thinking almost 30, back through Garner. Or is it 30 yeah. years? 30, <laughs> 28 years, something yeah. like that. Wow. Jim Waters, our guest on this morning's Community Voice program, News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. Again, questions and comments, you can post to the News Talk 1330 Facebook page, and we will share them on the program by the way before we leave millage uh and i think your listeners probably know this too because it's been pointed out but uh, we still have the lowest millage rate in the county if not the area uh we're at again we're 4.6 i believe rome is around 10 or 11 rome georgia who, who we go trojans we whipped up on rome uh friday night because it was an exciting game but in cedar town is like uh, 12 or 13 um uh, Mills. So anyway, we've got a low millage rate in the, in the in the city of Carrollton. How much money does Carrollton stand to collect additional? Uh, I believe it's around six hundred thousand. It's a it's it's a big number this year. Um, so yeah, a lot of property values have gone up. But uh, part of uh, what what my job is and the city, what the elected officials' job and ultimately the city's job is to make sure we're spending that money, uh, revenue, tax dollars, however you want to put it, in the very best way possible to benefit the citizens. So that's what I plan on doing. What is the very best best way possible with that extra six hundred thousand? Uh, bank head corridor. <laughs> well, that'll lead us into the next question then. I figured that was yeah. number three on your we can, list. We can talk about the, the planned beautification project. Yeah. Uh, just out here, just up the road. Um, yeah, to, to summarize it, I believe the city wants to see that bank head corridor from Cedar Street to Postal Way at least kind of resemble, eventually resemble the square. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fair. I mean, basically, if you go from um, Highway 27 on Alabama Street through the square, I don't, it may be called, I don't know where it, it's, where it becomes Bankhead, but anyway, from 27 through the square, it's three lanes all the way to Cedar Street, and, and up to about three years ago from the square to Cedar was four lanes, if y'all remember that. It was really tight. Uh, we and we, I got a lot of calls. We all got a lot of calls because that construction project lasted about four months longer than it, than we originally planned because we got into the weather, winter season, and and um, but that road stayed torn up for for again about four to six months. But now I get no complaints. People are not complaining. I can't believe y'all went from four lanes to three. Traffic moves just fine. But yes, to answer to, to your point, um, we got three lanes all the way to cedar but then from cedar on out to uh the lake it's five lanes so if two two lanes uh, going both directions in a center turning lane and the proposal um or the proposed plan is to make that three lanes and of course that's a that's a source of a lot of contention uh with with several people um brent harris who's running for ward two has been pretty outspoken against it he's he's got property there but we've got we've had traffic engineers look at it. We didn't just we the city council did not just decide that that was a good idea. We brought in professionals that get paid to make these kind of or not make these kind of decisions. That's our decision, but make these kind of recommendations. And they have convinced me uh, that three lanes will be just fine. Where that that road is not that heavily trafficked, um, or that, so we don't need five lanes today, much less uh, in the future. So. Yeah, we're, we have already voted on it. That's sort of uh, water under the bridge. That's a project that's going to happen. Uh, I believe the total bill, start to finish, which is probably a two, two and a half year project, is uh, $3.5 million roughly. 1.7, I believe, is grants from the state. So we're on the hook for whatever that math is, two, two million, one point eight, mm-hmm. something like that, uh, which will come out of the general fund and possibly SPLOS. We, we've got about a million dollars in SPLOS that, that may go towards that. But we've got the money to do it. 
uh, the, we have healthy reserves with the city. And this is, as, a, as I kind of start out my rant, uh, this is an example of, in my, my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinion, a good use of tax dollars. We are investing right back into our community, which is what you're supposed to do. If we would went out and bought a Learjet, I'd expect you all to get mad at us. But this is <laughs> for elected officials. But no, this is, these, these are, this is a project that will benefit everyone. And hopefully the, 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 uh, the property owners on that, on that road will, will agree. Betty Kaysen, running for mayor, Walt Hollingsworth, mayor, both on the program last week. Um, both expressed the belief that there's $9.5 million in, yep. uh, in reserved yep. revenue. But I'm also getting feedback from other people in the city that they believe there's $20 million in reserve, which is, which is the accurate one. It's uh, it's actually twenty. It's 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 higher. There's uh, we have reserves in the water and sanitation funds that aren't in that general fund reserve. That nine million or yeah the nine nine nine, nine to, It's actually around nine million today. But I talked to Jim Triplett, our, our financial officer, uh, last week, and he said when the tax or the the property taxes start coming in, and and I believe occupational tax too. There's another big source of revenue that starts coming in in the fall and goes until January or February. So that, that tax, tax digest should jump up another $2 million or so. So if we're at, say, if we're at nine today, it should be at 11, maybe 12 million by the first of the year. So we have healthy reserves, but it is the, the total, if you add all of the cash that we have sitting in accounts at the, for the city of Carrollton, that's liquid, it's about $20 million. Mm-hmm. Are you open to the money that's in reserves based on the water? You open to moving that to a different fund to pay for something else? Uh, yo, yeah, yeah. I mean that that the the we basically have three main. Well, we got a lot of revenue streams or, or ways that we collect taxes, but one gets one one of the many ways goes into the general fund, and then we have a water and sewage fund, which is when you get a water bill if you live in the city. Uh, that goes into the water uh, that goes in the water and sewage fund, and then we also have uh sanitation fund which i believe is on the same bill actually so uh those are our, those really are three buckets so to speak um and i think your question was if i'm okay putting them all in the same yeah because yeah, we look at it because like i say i mean um, the mayor and candidate for mayor both i mean their perspective is 9.5 in the reserve so maybe they're not considering taking it out of that water fund if it ever became an issue i mean yeah. would you be open to doing that I, well, I don't know. I wouldn't be open to doing that. I mean, we're look, we we have lots of money in the bank, but the reason we have lots of money in the bank is because even before before my time, um, the city's done a good job of of setting money back. So I'm I'm definitely not a tax and spend kind of person. So no, this 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 bankhead project is a big project for us. You know, two million dollars roughly is what it's going to cost out of our out of our reserve. Again, that's a lot of money. But uh, no, we're not we're not going to go stealing or, or taking money from another fund uh, to help pay for this or another project. We're 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 watching our watching our dollars. Eight forty three. Our guest this morning is Ward Three City Councilman for the City of Carrollton, Jim Waters. He is one of four people who will be on the ballots in November. Um, early elections, early early uh, voting is October something or other, three weeks before November the 5th. If I, 14th, I believe. 14th, October, October the 14th. 14th. Yep. Um, Jim Waters, our guest on this morning's Community Voice Program. We'll take our first break and come back and talk more with Jim. News Talk 1330 FM 106.3, Community Voice, sponsored by Oak Mountain Academy and Tanner Health System. West Georgia and East Alabama. Because we know that exceptional care isn't based on how many patients we serve, but how well we serve them. That's why we're focused on quality, delivering the best possible care for our patients. It's why we're expanding our clinical services and building new facilities to serve our growing community. And it's why we're looking beyond our hospitals and medical practices to develop sustainable wellness and preventive health programs in our region. What makes a hospital great has changed. It's not how many beds we have. It's how well we care for the neighbors who need them. Delivering the right care to every patient, every time, is how Tanner is advancing health with medicine beyond measure. Learn more at Tanner.org or find a physician on our medical staff by calling 770-214-CARE. A well-rounded education includes much more than just academics. 
At Oak Mountain Academy, we encourage our students to find their niche in any of our 42 co-curricular opportunities. Over the past five years, we have brought home five state and 20 regional athletic titles. Our one-act play and literary teams continuously compete at the region and state level, and our academic teams bring home first place more than not. We are warriors creating legacies. To learn more, visit oakmountain.us. Eight forty-five. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program here on News Talk thirteen thirty FM one hundred six point three, and this morning also streaming live on the News Talk thirteen thirty WLBB Facebook page. Joel Brock behind the cameras this morning. Jim Waters, our guest. He is Carrollton City Councilman for Ward three in the city of Carrollton. Challenged by three people this year. Election day is November the fifth. Also, want to give a big shout out to Michael Vincent pressing the buttons behind the glass this morning. Thanks for coming in and handling that for us. Getting back to campaign mode here for for Jim Waters. Do you enjoy the campaign? I'd say four years ago, didn't really have to uh, do anything. Just show your face, talk to people a little bit. Do you have to do anything that different this year with three people challenging you? Oh yeah, oh, a lot lot different. You're, to your point, I didn't do anything four years ago. That's really easy. So, um, and I, I kind of assumed or, or suspected uh, that someone would run, and, not, and we got three. I got three running against me, and that that's great. That's great. I mean, part of not to get into this unless you want to, but we we doubled the the pay of the city council uh folks and mayor uh, effective after you get reelected so i don't get it unless i get reelected but part of that from my perspective was to encourage more people to run and get involved um, you know we got rid of the retirement package that honestly was part of the reason some people ran before um so 300 dollars a month is not a whole lot 600 is more um but uh you know it's, it was to encourage folks to run because you got to give them a reason and otherwise you just get people that have an agenda or they're mad and we don't want the city running by folks just mad. We want folks that want to step up and do the right thing, which everything I've heard about the three folks running against me, they're all running you know, positive campaigns, and, and they just want to do what's right for the city, I think. So I think that's wonderful. What is Ward 3? What are oh, the boundaries? Uh, yeah, I'll send you a map. It's basically from – uh, up north of uh, or close to the new Chick Fil A, up on um, on uh, was it sixty one sixteen going out of town, uh, all the way or th- to, through the city of Carrollton, uh, south of Bankhead. That's really actually that is the the separator between Ward Three and Ward Two. If you follow Bankhead all the way into Carrollton downtown, uh, I have everything south, and Rory had everything north. Now it's uh, Brent and Brett, Brent Harris and Brett Ledbetter running for that spot. So then from the square, it basically goes south all the way to uh, around where Walmart is. Excuse me, not Walmart, um, Kroger. That's that um, that that um, uh, convenience, or, it's not convenience store, that that's mall Plaza, area. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, obviously Oak Mountain Park, Oak Mountain Golf, everything to the west, or excuse me, the east of, of, the, of the city of Carrollton. So that's my ward. Um, and it's, um, yeah, I live in Victoria Vinings, which is on the very edge of the ward, but I'm in the ward. I, someone would challenge her. I was going to challenge if I was lived in the ward. I was like, I hope so. I've been in the city council for eight years. So yeah, I'm in the ward. You, what, what's the role of city council person? Has your perspective of that changed over the last eight years? And, and I ask that because I think I've talked to candidates before who, who've come into the job thinking they had more input or maybe i don't want to say control it's just you know but just more more authority maybe and then they learned once they got in it that it wasn't what they expected and i don't know if that's because you're not doing the research or reading up on the charter or maybe because you saw previous people in certain actions and believe that you could follow and do the same things they did but what, what do you feel like the role for uh, for city councilman is yep, that, that's a really good question and, and I, I, I let me let me <laughs> i'm gonna pick on the mayor just because he's a friend of mine and he was on your show last week i believe it was but the the mayor is not the ceo of the city neither is uh he the de facto department head um director or they don't the department heads don't report to him uh that that all all, all that is the is our city manager tim grizzard he's the ceo of the city uh, everyone report at the city reports directly to him. So again, um, Walt, I, I, he may have been a slip of the tongue or whatever, but uh, the mayor and the council, the way the charter is written, is we basically have we're the basically the board of directors for the the corporation or the entity called the city of Carrollton. We are an advisory. We have an advisory role to the um, 
to the city manager. We hire the city manager. If he doesn't do right, we get to fire him if we have uh, three votes, a majority. But that's it. As far as personnel with the city, that's the limit of our responsibility and authority is just with a city manager. And then uh, as far as so that's really our, our, in my opinion, our biggest role is is to making sure we have a competent city manager. And in my opinion, we certainly do. Tim does a, a great job, and and I tell anybody that asks uh, asks me about the city manager that exact thing. So he's not perfect. None of us are perfect, but but overall, he does a really good job. But as far as responsibility of of the council, besides that, obviously, we get to vote on how we collect revenues or taxes. So what you asked about the millage rate, that's one of the big jobs we have. Another one is setting uh, policies, or ordinances for the city, basically the laws of, of the city of Carrollton. Uh, we, we vote on changes to the zoning map. So if people want to build a, uh, whether it's a residential neighborhood or commercial, whatever, we get to, we get to decide where they build it and, and what the, uh, the rules around that are. And also we're just daily ambassadors for the city. So we're, you know, we, we go to ribbon or oh, actually Walt goes to a lot of ribbon cuttings. I don't, maybe I should, but we're ambassadors for the city. So, uh, and the last thing is we, we vote on the annual budget. So we, we don't set the budget. That's the city manager and Jim triplets and the department has job, but we are ultimately, we approve the budget. So that's, that's, that's the job of the city council. And you think you've done that over the last eight years? I know I've done that over the last eight years, yeah, to the best of my ability. 851 Community Voice Program brought to you by Tanner Health System, News Talk 1330, FM 106.3, also sponsored by Oak Mountain Academy. We'll come back with about eight minutes, wrap up our program with Jim Waters, current uh, city councilman representing Ward 3 in the city of Carrollton. At Oak Mountain Academy, our daily schedule includes convocation, prayer, and the Pledge of Allegiance. By doing so, we build a family-like community where all students grow and flourish and personal faith is encouraged. Through community service and a historical approach to biblical study, our students are taught the value of the warrior way, honesty, respect, and responsibility. Oak Mountain Academy, we are a family creating legacies. To learn more, visit oakmountain.us. At Tanner, we're advancing health throughout West Georgia and East Alabama because we know that exceptional care isn't based on how many patients we serve, but how well we serve them. That's why we're focused on quality, delivering the best possible care for our patients. It's why we're expanding our clinical services and building new facilities to serve our growing community. And it's why we're looking beyond our hospitals and medical practices to develop sustainable wellness and preventive health programs in our region. What makes a hospital great has changed. It's not how many beds we have. It's how well we care for the neighbors who need them. Delivering the right care to every patient, every time, is how Tanner is advancing health with medicine beyond measure. Learn more at Tanner.org or find a physician on our medical staff by calling 770-214-CARE. Eight fifty three. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program here on News Talk thirteen thirty FM one hundred six point three. And this morning we are streaming live on the News Talk thirteen thirty WLBB Facebook page. As uh, we do wrap up our program here with about six seven minutes left to go, I encourage you to post any questions or comments to the News Talk thirteen thirty Facebook page, and I'll take a peek at those uh, as we wrap up our discussion with Jim Waters. Or don't if you don't want to. And uh, we'll, we'll finish asking uh, questions here. What do you see as the uh, issues for the city of Carrollton for the next four years? What are going to be the things that council people and, uh, and the mayor will be facing uh, issues to deal with, good and bad? Uh, yeah, the, um, I'm trying to think of, um, uh, of, of things that we've got coming down the pike that I'm aware of that they're going to be contentious. And I, honestly, I'd I can't think of, of anything. You know, we, we already talked about the Bankhead project, uh, that, but that's been voted on. Um, gosh, what, what I plan on doing if, if reelected, and by the way, thank, uh, before I forget, thank y'all, thank everyone for voting for me eight years ago and last year, four years ago. Uh, and I'd ask for your support again at this go around, but again, thank, thanks for that support. But as, as far as, as far as, uh, big projects or things coming down the pike, I, there's, there's, 
there's really nothing that I that I'm aware of. We're just gonna I'm gonna just try to keep on doing what we've been doing, which is uh, spending tax dollars wisely to, in the best way that I believe and that will benefit all citizens, and um, and keep Carrollton great. Should city council people have a, uh, a limit on how long they are council people? And I'm not to suggest that eight years is a limit or anything like that. I just, you know, just wonder as the city grows, as you know, as the population gets bigger and the ages change and things like that, should there be a limit on council people? Yeah, it, it maybe self-imposed limit. Uh, yeah, I. Gosh, that's that's the old term limits debate, and um, and it's a it's a good debate. It's a good question. Uh, now that I'm on the on the other side of the fence and, and in office, I do see uh, the the benefits, um, and this is not self serving, but I do see the benefits of any person in politics staying in longer than one one term, or, or you know, and whether it should be. Ten terms. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe it should. There should be a limit. But you do learn as you as you as you are in office on what works and what doesn't work. So, uh, and I certainly have done that. So to answer your question, uh, no, I don't. I don't. I think the voters can decide if it's time for someone to retire, and um, and they do that every. They have to get that opportunity every four years in Carrollton. So I I like that that form. In Ward 3, what would be your most important relationships? And, and I suppose I'm looking out at it uh, as businesses and partners, community partners. For, uh, yeah, as far as businesses go, is specifically in my ward, uh, Southwire is is by far the largest, uh, was the largest company, I believe, or, uh, in, in the city. I believe that's right. Um, uh, and Tanner, they, them and Tanner are, are neck and neck as far as, a number of employees i believe southwire is bigger than they are but anyway both of the, both of those big uh, companies are in my ward so um but even outside my ward the university of west georgia the carrollton city school systems we all we we work very or try very hard to work closely w- with all uh, major uh, employers and, and businesses but uh i'm 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 just as uh, if not more so responsible for the the, the residents uh, in 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 my ward, those are the folks that get out and vote. Southwire doesn't go vote, but uh, Bill Smith or whoever in Oak Mountain Golf does. So uh, I want to make sure everybody knows how to get in touch with me. Qu- quick phone number seven seven zero eight five one three six six eight is my phone number. Uh, my email address Jim Waters with two T's. Then uh, ward3 at gmail.com is my email address. Um, I get calls and, and texts and emails not really all that often. from. I'm talking over the last eight years from my constituents. And most of the time, the city, if it, most of it is like speeding. The people speeding on my street. There's a pothole in front of my driveway or place of business. And I call, make a call to Tommy uh, Holland, Tim Grizzard, Mike Green at the city, and they jump on it immediately. So it makes my job very simple. But to, to, an, to answer your question, um, they know it's just yes, the businesses are important, but the but the actual citizens are my most important uh, priority. All right, we got two minutes to go. You got a Facebook page or a way that people can contact you? You know, I, well, the, the I just gave my email and phone number, mm-hmm. but my I do have a Facebook page. Uh, I don't have a campaign campaign page up and running yet. Uh, I do have a guy that's working with me on that. But hopefully by the end of this week, since we're we're basically six weeks out from tomorrow, six weeks from tomorrow is the election, so we can start putting signs out in people's yards tomorrow. Uh, per the city ordinance so really the election gets started tomorrow and the league of women voters they have their forums tonight uh, tonight's Tuesday. two and four right tonight is two and four is two and four tomorrow is, is is ward three and then wednesday is the mayor so the campaign is cranking up this week jim waters is the current council member representing ward three in the city of Carrollton. he'll be challenged on ballots this november the 5th by uh, usama ahmed tina shockley and don goodwin We do hope to have each and every one of them on the program in the coming week. Jim, good to see you again. Thanks for talking to us this morning. Thanks for having me. And I appreciate you guys listening and checking us out on the News Talk 1330 Facebook page this morning. News Talk 1330 FM 106.3, the Community Voice Program, brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. Tune in tomorrow morning at 830 for more Community Voice.